kudos to you if you have reached this far and in this video we'll be building the update to do function uh, which people find the most um, confusing sometimes so it's usually uh, the update function is usually a mix of get by id and uh, create it's usually a mix of those things so uh, let's start writing our to do function so we'll have update to do and the re uh, the usual stuff which is uh, w is http dot response writer so we have a response and then we have a request r is a pointer to http dot request all right and then then we need to get our id because uh, to update uh, we'll have to pass the id to update a particular record right and uh, very similar to what we did in delete to do so i can either copy and paste this line but i'm not going to do that i'm going to actually type it out because i want you to type it out with me and because that's how you become a good developer trim space chi dot url yeah so the basically the key to become a great developer is to uh is basically repetition you know the more number of times you perform an operation the better you get it at it so so yeah so basically we got id which was a variable that we just defined right now and uh, we got the id by uh, from the chi middleware that we're using right now and it was there in the url parameters uh in the request so the id that we have is now id uh, of this variable is has been assigned to this variable now right so now we'll have to check if this is a hex right id i sorry id x id so if this is not hex right that means if uh, our id is not hex because you have this exclamation mark here so if it's not hex then we need to say rnd which is our renderer dot json we need to say w comma http dot status bad request comma renderer dot m and message and the id is invalid makes sense and return from this function so this is exactly the same as uh, the delete true function till here nothing has changed it's exactly the same right no changes and now comes the part which may have uh, some differentiation t to do so we'll define a variable t of type to do if error equal to json dot new decoder r dot body so we want to basically take the body that we get from the request and we want to uh, you know decode it and place it inside t which is a variable which we have just defined and if error is not equal to nil that means if the error is there then we want to print out something we want to say our renderer dot json w comma http dot status uh, processing it's not there in my uh, you know auto auto fill so i'm going to, have to write it manually so status processing and error and then we can just return from there so far so good and now we'll have ft dot title is equal to is equal to empty if the title is empty then we'll say so this is basically validation we're just checking if the user has sent the right thing http dot status bad request comma renderer dot m and message title field is required okay so and obviously there's a return after this so this part you have seen it somewhere right from here to here you've seen it somewhere you've seen it in the create to do function right is the same thing exactly same thing right so you're basically writing the code from the create to do function and now let's start writing the rest of the function 
db dot c and collection name dot update sorry dot and the next line update so you have to open a uh, you know you have to access the database and you have to access the collection name and then inside update you're going to have to say vson.m id which is equal to vson dot object id hex and the bracket id so we want to pass uh, an id property to our um, database right and that will be equal to uh, the id that we've just received here but converted into uh, hex that's what we're doing here okay so there's a comma after this and then you have bsum.m now you need the title also of the um, <clears throat> to-do list so t dot title comma completed t dot completed comma and uh, that is it i think yes so now we check for error if the error is not equal to nil that means if the error is there then we'll say renderer dot json w comma http dot status processing our usual stuff you know that's what we have been using till now renderer dot m and we'll have a message we'll have fail to update to do comma error and we'll display the error okay all we have to do is return from this function so uh, this was all that was there in our update to do function that is that it is is it uh, so basically first we get our id then we check if the id is hex or not right and then we create t which is a type to do and then we decode the body that we get from our um, front end and we assign it to t and then we check if the title is not empty if it's empty then uh, you know we will have some validation here and then uh, at towards the end we'll have uh, we'll access our database and we'll uh, access the update command in our database and then we're going to send the id and title of the uh, new uh, you know the to the uh, to be updated uh, to do to the database and if there's an error then we'll uh, write the error saying fail to update to do so that's all there is now i can see that there is an error here it says one it's giving me an error and if it's in the os file then it's not a problem it shouldn't be a problem i can't see it right now but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and build this file and i'm expecting uh, quite a few errors and then we'll uh, sit and solve them together so don't worry so i'll see you in the terminal so one little thing that we need to do before we head over to our powershell is that we need to copy and paste the home.tpl file in the static folder. So um, I will be giving you the link to the home.tpl file, which is basically the front end file that will help us to interact with the to-do. But I will also show you right now in this video how you can uh, how you will be able to download it. So if I hope you can see my Google Chrome browser right now. And I will give you the link to this repository, the Golang to-do repository. Inside that is a static folder and inside that is the home.tpl file. So this is the file that you need to uh, copy. You need to co copy the entire static folder and the home.tpl file as well along with that. And then everything should work at your end. So uh, I have gone ahead and uh, copied uh, the, uh, the file in my folder and the folder itself. So now I think we can go ahead and uh, go to the PowerShell and see and just take a look at the errors that we may encounter. So I'm in my PowerShell right now. I'm inside the folder, inside go slash ssc, and go to do is the folder where I've created my project. And here, all I have to do is say go and build. So as expected, we have an error. It says unexpected new line, expecting comma or bracket on line number 20845. This is inside the func main, I am assuming. And so let's head over to our code window to see what exactly the problem is. Uh, inside the code window, now I can see on 208, yeah. So 
defer cancel after defer cancel i did not close it with uh, a bracket so i need to do that and uh, there was an extra bracket here by mistake so now i think uh, things should work hopefully oh yeah there's one more error here object id hex so there's a uh, j by mistake here on line number 130 which is in the delete to do function so i'm going to go ahead and remove that as well and now i don't really see any errors so uh, there's a squiggly line here don't worry about that okay for the os and stop uh, channel but uh, you need to worry about the errors if there's any more errors uh, it doesn't seem like it so i hope you've fixed your the the error inside funk main right that i just fi uh, fixed which which was with defer cancel right and then you fix the uh, object id hex error also in the delete to do function and now let's uh, head over to our powershell and see what other errors it gives us so we say go build so no errors so we're going to say go run main.go and we should have uh, you should see this on your screen listening on port 9000 i have a pop-up from my firewall which is asking me to allow this uh, and i've allowed it and now what we'll do is we'll head over to our chrome browser so back in our browser now we'll go over to localhost 9000 and since i have a few to do's already it's showing up on my screen but uh, you will have an empty screen out here it's not a problem at all so I'll start creating new to-dos from here. I'll say riding, ride, bike, and buy meds, buy groceries, right? So I can add new to-dos. I can edit them, right? And I have to click on this to commit it, buy bike at 2 p.m. And then I can delete them, right? So we have a fully functioning uh, to-do list and I hope uh, you learned a lot from this video if you're liking this uh, series then do subscribe because I have a lot more stuff uh, coming out soon uh, so the next video from uh, after this will be a complete Golang CRUD in my with my SQL and using Golang Mux router so that's going to be quite interesting and then soon I'll cover GraphQL with Golang and then gRPC with Golang and Golang microservices and then uh, and then a complete architecture with Golang, you know, like Kubernetes, Docker, and Golang. And then we'll also look at uh, a, a, an architecture with Golang, which will have monitoring as well, with like um, Grafana and Prometheus. So it's going to uh, get quite heavy, and we're going to look at very complicated things very soon. So do keep do uh, stay subscribed to this channel so that you uh, keep getting updates. And uh, also one more thing I want to point out in this video is if you ho head over to your PowerShell, you will see all these logs. Uh, being generated in your uh, PowerShell or in your terminal uh, as and when you hit the uh, to-do routes. So you can, if there's any error, you, you'll be able to catch them in the logs in the PowerShell. So that's what I want to uh, point out. And thanks a lot for watching and I hope uh, you learned a lot and thank you.